Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Picture so perfect we play Hello wonderful people, welcome back again to this YouTube channel. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet all of you according to Una time. Yes, welcome back again to Anointed Lady TV. If today now the first time you you come across my channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And to all my returning subscribers, I appreciate all, all of you for our massive support to this platform. I say may God richly bless you all for always supporting this channel in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, my correct people. I gave it away. Be say I want to present to Una this very hour, and I'm me and Una now go to watch this video together. Make we just sit back, watch the video. Then after you don't watch her, drop your opinion for the comment section. Make we watch the video. Bye bye. Since last year or the year before, when we were talking about insecurity in Nigeria, people hardly mentioned the southeast, mm. except some pockets of. Uh, happenstance here and there. Yeah. Today, the Southeast has become a theater of sorts to the extent that eminent personalities have gone down. Let me start by asking, how did we get to this point? Well, uh, I think it's it's quite a number of issues you have raised in that particular question. But let me also reframe the question so that we can also address it uh, by looking at the critical issues so that we don't end up talking about or shooting uh, uh, Western bullets in the ear rather than targeting the enemy, you know, at the end of the day. And I'm happy that you started with history. But let me also ask the fundamental question. Who is afraid of who in Nigeria? And why is who is afraid of who afraid of who in this country? And if you ask that fundamental question, then you must be able to also ask yourself, when a man urinates by facing his front, it means that he has absolute confidence in his environment. But if he turns around as he urinates, he may not have confidence in that environment. Now let's go back to the history which you have raised, uh, as, and that is very fundamental, because we can't understand where we are today without us under, actually understanding where we're coming from in the true sense of it, so that we know where we're going. Uh, 1763, 20,000, uh, you know, uh, slaves were taken uh, to the plantation farms in Europe. <laughs> uh, within the bites of Benin, for example, and around the Calabar area, uh, 20,000. Out of that 20,000, it was reported that almost 16,000 were from the southeast, uh, presupposedly the Igbos <laughs> at that time. And then you fast forward that 1946, uh, we saw that following again the offshoots from the amalgamation <laughs> of north and south, uh, which came in 1914. 1914. 1946, we saw the balkanization of the South, and then we had the Southeast, and then the Southwest, uh, in the true sense of it. Now, if you fast forward that to the events that actually occurred from 1966, and that was where, for example, agitations uh, became very right among that particular category of people. And I permit my use of the word category. Uh, because the Igbos uh, from the southeast, and indeed a lot of other ethnic groups like the Ibibio, the Efik, and, the, and, and a lot of them who form the initial uh, uh, bite of Biafara, <laughs> as it were, uh, had their own agitations about issues associated with governance uh, and delivery of resources in the true sense of it. And so we saw that culminating into uh, what really happened uh, between uh, January 15, 1967, uh, to July, you know, of uh, 1970, uh, in the true sense of it. And that was a civil war where, of course, it was the consequences of our inability to address uh, some of the agitations at that time that perhaps resulted into, uh, you know, that kind of um, uh, uh, a fisticuff, as it were, resulting in the killings of a lot of people. So we had a civil war as a result of our inability to manage our diversity at that time. And of course, it was reported that that civil war ended exactly uh, two years, six months, one week, and two days, <laughs> as it were. Yeah. And Godfrey Mwake Kagile in 2001 wrote on ethnic politics in Kenya and Nigeria and reported that 4.5 million people were displaced from the southeast in the true sense of it. And then Stephen in 2014 also reported in a capital gains 
that two million civilian Biafrans perished as a result of that particular a senseless war, <laughs> needless war, as it were, in the true sense of it. And quite a number of other injuries were also sustained. In 1968, particularly, the Israelites, who were then supporting the Nigerian government, dropped down their support for Nigerian government and started supporting Biafra because they saw the pictures in the media about hunger, about the skeletal nature of children in the true sense of the word because of that particular war. And I need to draw this because there's a point I want to make so that I can draw the strain from what Bello has also said concerning yesterday's day of Biafra. Now, these were the figures, the casualties at that time. Now, in 1994, a place of improvement in our economic life, a place of improvement in our trading life, a place of improvement in our supply of water, a place of improvement in our construction of roads, a place of improvement in our common destiny as a nation in terms of security. And if this is the description, it means that changing the parts of this particular engine every day is what we have chosen to do rather than getting a new engine in the true sense of the word. And this is where some of us have our doubts about this issue of amendment of the constitution in the true sense of the word. And another question I have asked is, why do we always wait until the election period comes nearer before we begin to raise these questions? Why is it that the same people who did not believe in the sanctity of even the 1999 constitution, as you people have mentioned in line with what uh, Professor Aduba has said, why is it that the same people who believe in 16 was greater than 19 still talk about the issue of justice today? Why do we have the same people who have benefited from the contraption that we have created for ourselves over the years? When they were in power, they never talk about these things. But when they are out of power, they talk the about champion. these things. Why do we have them? Why do we have governors of the Southeast who do not believe in a common agitation for improvement of quality of lives of the man in the fringes of Biafra today? Why do we have them not believing in that particular movement? when they are in power, but when they are out of power, they continue to support it. It means that something is wrong somewhere. It means that politicians are playing tricks on us. And if they are playing tricks on us, where is our collective destiny in all these things we are talking about? And I mentioned this, Kanayo or Kanayo will confirm this. And he called me the following day and said, look at Pampe, you asked a fundamental question, that if Nigerians have lived do this marriage of inconvenience for over 100 years together and we have produced 36 children together and we have produced 774 grandchildren together as a country living in that marriage of inconvenience because again the 1913 law that brought in the 1914 amalgamation lawyers are listening to me now they may confirm this that particular law, from that particular period, if you see the design of that particular law, it is meant to ensure that there was a relationship that is typified by the African nuclear family between a husband and a wife. One is to behave like the wife, the other is to behave like the husband. Why are we not discussing these issues in our history books? Why are we not telling our younger generation today? Now, if we have lived together, married together for over 100 years since 1914, a marriage of inconvenience, produced 36 children, produced 774 grandchildren, 36 children being the 36 states, 774 grandchildren being the 774 uh, local governments in Nigeria, is divorce an option in 2021? Quite okay. Some people out there will say, yes, look at Pampe, divorce is an option. Because you will go back and ask the question that was asked in 1957. Was Nigeria wedded or welded? Was the Southern and Northern Protectorate wedded or welded? Were we wedded or welded in the Greater Declaration in Zungeru in Niger State, which today has turned into a theater of war in Nigeria? Were we wedded or welded? If we were wedded, it means that we were married. And if we were married, was it a marriage of inconvenience or an RNG marriage by the colonial government? Or there was an agreement. Or there was an agreement. <coughs> or, really, or, our, yes. or our leader. Or our leader. Or our manfu, as our people will say. <laughs> so if that is the situation and the reality today, then you must also ask yourself the fundamental question. If we were wedded, 
and we have been together for over 100 years in that marriage of inconvenience and we have produced this number of people is divorce an option if divorce is not an option how do we make that marriage better this is a fundamental question that we must be able to ask how do we improve on it but if we were wedded in the greater zungeru declaration of 1914 then we must also ask ourselves a metal that is welded welded i'm not a welder but welders know out there has its own lifespan one day it is certainly going to break but if it is going to break how is it going to break is it going to break and fall on the man in the house or that the man will clearly take it to a place where he will ensure that it's dismembered dismembered these are fundamental questions so when you say where did we come from these are the things that we must talk about it today and this is what our younger generation should be able to know what we see about the killings in southeast what we see about the killings in Oweri, I have used that San Mbakwe International Airport on two different occasions. Now, I know that the distance from San Mbakwe International Airport, for example, to Nekede, where I went on two occasions, I can tell you the state of the road from that particular point to the other point, where, for instance, the late Gulak was killed. Mm. Are we a nation that care about our people? Even in places where these so-called VIPs go, they don't even take their time to ensure that there is security there. In the true sense of it. And every Nigerian today is shouting that the nation is not well, particularly the elite, because one of them was taken down. Every day we have lives being sniffed the out ordinary, of uh, with ordinary, ordinary even in Niger state yesterday 15 people 15 were killed people, 15 in people. Niger state and I said it Bello Lukman where is the governor of Niger state it was reported that the governor of Niger state has traveled out of Niger state and look at the re good, ridiculous reason he's given yes. that is going to look to for solution for, for solution to <laughs> the to, to the, the incessant problem. problem of insecurity in Niger yes, state this abroad is, this is quite unfortunate and, and he's not the commander yes, in chief of the armed forces. armed forces and i have said that this madness about about consulting the mosquito on how to solve malaria sickness must end we have the solutions with us and I said on this platform that we must all march to Kuje prison to go and apologize to Chief Joshua Chibi Darie, the Kawum Mushere. Not because he's in prison, but because he lost his seat as governor of Plateau State under state of emergency. On issues that today the same government would have declared a state of emergency in those states. And maybe even worse. Even worse. A country where, for example, over 20, just about 22 million people take away 90% of our total revenue. You have mentioned it here with recurrent expenditure. It is short of saying that you would have put it in figures for us to see. And then about 180 million Nigerians do not have access to these things. And we sit down here every day, we lambast ourselves, we talk about these things. The same politicians who have dragged us into this kind of situation are the ones that are sitting and calling for conferences. Yesterday we had Pandev. Yesterday we had the representatives of Middle Belt. Yesterday we had the representatives of Ohaneze. Yesterday we had the representations of the Yorubas meeting in Af Abuja. Afeniferi. Afeniferi. And we had elder statesmen who have benefited from this same system sitting down to give us a destiny some of them i had them saying i was in abacha's constitutional yes, conference i was also in the 2014 yes. constitutional conference and yet they are still they the are ones still that the are ones still that are deliberating today this. and you ask a fundamental question where is the future of this country and people will tell you that it is youth o'clock if it is youth o'clock what are the youths doing now you have these meetings in the sitting of the senate here in Jos, here in Jos, you had the knowledge they protested hmm. when their own spokesperson was going to speak. Was, yes. Where is the democracy that we are talking about? Where is the freedom of expression we are talking about? When the Igbos raise their voice and say we want to sit at home to mount our people, those who understand the reality about the ideology behind it, the whole country said, no, that cannot happen. When the houses decide to take their own destiny by ensuring that they protect themselves through these agencies that have come up, including vigilantes, what do we tell them? 
they are against us. So the mutual suspicion between us, this us and them concept, must be killed. Because when our Mutekun came up, yes, we had all sort of dissenting voices from even areas it. that are not even connected even to connected. even the southwest. Even connected. Corey, let me ask you this question before we open the phone lines. Yesterday we mentioned it uh, in the course of the Nisi Previous Week. Are we gradually marching towards? The doom, final doom of Nigeria. Well, every every doom is suspected if you don't manage manage your time. <laughs> you can't take mm. that away. Uh, you remember the research group at the time that said uh, by 2015, 2015 Nigeria will be no more. <laughs> and we said no, our God is a God of uh, mercy and he has allowed us to continue. <laughs> if you don't manage, even you as Andrew, if you don't manage your life, there is a day of doom. Mm. But what are we afraid of? Are we afraid of death? Are we afraid of the day of doom? Are we afraid of the day of coming out of the tunnel to see the sunshine? Certainly no. We are afraid about the destiny. And what destiny? The destiny after death. And that is a fundamental thing. So if you must ask the question, we have also seen that if you go to, for example, Chobe Junction, that is Nigeria staring at you in the face. <laughs> that is Nigeria. If you go to Nasarawa, that is Nigeria staring you in the face. If you go to Angwanrimi, that is Nigeria staring you in the face. Anywhere you go, is Nigeria staring you in the face? I don't want to raise blood pressures. But when Chelsea played against Manchester City, in the true sense of it, people who gather to watch the matches, that is Nigeria staring at you in the face. It has no connotation for Ibo or Hausa or Fulani. People were there shouting in their own languages when the goal finally came through. For those who were in support of that particular team. From Mount when Wiki Tories played uh, uh, Rivers United, Bauchi and, River, and, yeah, yeah. and, 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 and Rivers, one, one. that is Nigeria staring you in the face. When NYSE students listen to me, COP, COP members, we call them COPers in this part of the world. When you lift and you go to three weeks orientation camp and they say, under the rain, under the sun, you will what? You will serve your mm. nation. It is simply telling you that the man who is leaving a place of rain is coming to a place of sunshine in the north mm. to and serve. Versa. A man who has left a place of sunshine is going to a place of the Sahel River mangrove to go and serve. So under the rain, under the sun, you are to what? Serve Not your nation. nation. That is all we get about us. What about our leaders? Do they serve us under the sun? Okay. Do they serve us under the rain? The answer is no. They serve us under the umbrella and they also serve us under the broom. This is where this leader serve us. Under air condition. Yeah, under air condition. This is where they serve us. And they have become our masters. I like what happened on Saturday with the civil engagement. Even though some of us were not even invited. When we saw government officials on 29 talking to themselves about their scorecard in a town hall meeting to themselves. But we also saw somebody convening a discussion about 2023. Bringing different shades of opinion to discuss the road to 2023. I'm talking about Samson O'Malley, if I'm not mm, mistaken. Yes. He's the convener of yes. that particular event. And you ask yourself, how cheap is talk? Talk is cheaper than not acting. Mm. And that is where we are today. All right.